Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from thousands of successful individuals from around the world. I'm your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm delighted to welcome an accomplished entrepreneur and an author from Los Angeles, USA, Anakin Day. Anakin, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Ash. It's wonderful to be here. Thank you. Anakin is an author, an entrepreneur. She's a culture strategist, and she's a chief happiness officer. She's the founder of Corporate Spring and Happy Life, Happy Work. And she's an author. And all of you know, I'm very partial to authors. She's an author of a book titled Fly Butterflies. And we'll talk about uh, Anakin's book as well. There, there is the book. <laughs> Anakin, uh, tell me a little bit about your own journey in brief. Yes, happy to. So born and raised in Norway. Uh, today, I live in Los Angeles, California. There's been quite a journey between those countries. I won't go into the details, but uh, I knew already as a, a child that um, one thing that was extremely important for me was to be happy. And mm. I noticed that the grown-ups didn't look very happy when they were working. Mm. So I decided I want to live a happy life. But not only that, I ended up actually making it to my career to make um people happy or organizations mm. happy mm. um so so i had an exciting career um 15 years in the corporate world where my job was actually to create enjoy enjoy uh, joyful uh workplaces mm -hmm. so working with culture and leadership and best places to work um and uh, after 15 years i decided to start my company corporate spring and for the last 10 years I've been lucky to work with companies all around the world and help them find more joy at work. Uh, and by doing that, become more successful as well. So, mm -hmm. so that's why I can live anywhere where I like. And I like California. So that's where I am. Absolutely. <laughs> and it's it's a beautiful part of the world to live in in California. So, mm -hmm. Anikin, you also say that you have a gift for transforming bureaucracies into businesses that buzz with creativity and joy. Help well, me understand this with an example. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, I didn't actually say that. It was Adam Grant, one of oh, my okay. big heroes. He told me that, um, or he gave me that quote, actually, um, after he learned about the kind of work that I do. So mm -hmm. I told him about how um, my specialty is, I will always I say, is to go into a room with people. And my goal is always that when they leave that room, they will look different. Their eyes will be shining. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we talked about how to actually do that. And you know, people are, we all want to do things with meaning and we want to connect with other people and we want to have fun. And when you bring people together and you create that good environment where people actually enjoy themselves, they also collaborate better. Mm -hmm. um, so if you see what you can do with people in a room just over a day and they can bring that with them into their work, mm -hmm. uh, you can actually make a huge impact in a short time mm -hmm. uh, just because you um, show people that it's possible to enjoy yourself and have fun while working. So that was what he was referring to. But, uh... Fascinating. Fascinating. <laughs> Let's now move to Corporate Spring. Uh, and you also mentioned there's another segment that you work on, which is Happy Life, Happy Work. Tell me about what you do in both these areas and uh, do keep giving some examples and anecdotes. Yes. So um, after having worked in the corporate world for such a long time and as an executive, I was always looking for companies that could help us and partner with us and, and uh, understand what do we need as a business, right? And I never found that company. I never found that consultancy that I wanted to hire. So mm -hmm. I decided that I wanted to start that company myself mm -hmm. uh, to help people and give them the tools and the training and partnerships mm -hmm. in order to help them move from where they are to where they need to be. Mm -hmm. So having done this for companies around the world for, for such a long time and both small startups and big mm -hmm. Fortune 500 companies, mm -hmm. um, very often I had people who mm. participated on the programs saying, you know what, this thing that we learned here today, that was so valuable. And I came home and I told my husband or wife, or I really wanted my kids to learn about mindsets and how you can find happiness and joy and, and, and how can you, um, you know, collaborate better and communicate better. Is this something like that for individuals? Mm. And I always had to say, no, oh, not really, but, you know, read my book or, or follow my blogs and all that. 
And then uh, last year, I decided, you know what, I want to create something that people uh, who is not in the corporate world, or maybe is, but don't have uh, a leader who hires someone like me or someone else in to come and like help them mm -hmm. and train mm -hmm. them in different things. So that's what Happy Life, Happy Work came from. And both the companies, so uh, Corporate Spring is uh, business to business, but uh, Happy Life, Happy Work is directed to anyone who actually want to learn some tools mm. in how to find more joy and happiness in their life and at work, because mm. it's so important I that agree. we're happy at work as well, because we, well, you know, we work so much. Most of our waking hours uh, spent thinking about work or being at work. So, mm. yeah. and, and for our viewers and listeners, can you share one or two tools that you use? Yes. Um, so I work, I use a model, which is mm. very uh, effective and I developed it through 20 years mm. and it goes in, uh, it's have five building blocks. So the first one is like, first of all, we need to understand why we do what we do. Mm -hmm. You know how many people who come to work and actually just do their jobs without being connected to a greater purpose, mm. but everyone can have a purpose. So I'll give you one example. Mm. I was on my way to to um, a client downtown in LA, mm -hmm. and on the way to the elevator, I started talking with the janitor, the the man who was cleaning the mm -hmm. floors, mm -hmm. and he he was just so bright and smiley and happy and all that. So I started talking to him, and I just told him like, mm -hmm. it's so great to see how energized and happy you are, yeah. and and. Uh, and then uh, he told me like, well, why can't, uh, you know, why am, am I not? Because I have the greatest job in the world. Mm -hmm. I said, That's wonderful. Tell me mm -hmm. about it. And he said, mm -hmm. you know, every day I come to work and I get to meet people and a lot of people don't look very happy. And then they come in and I say hi and I smile and I give them a, and we start talking and they walk away feeling happier than when mm -hmm. I, I, they came in. So that's was what, why he was doing what he's doing. So when I talk about happiness, you know, having a purpose, you don't have to save the world. You can just do something that just makes someone's world a little bit better as well. How wonderful. And what a great example you've given. Thank you. So, uh, Annika, let's talk about culture. You're also a culture strategist. Let me start by asking you, how do you define culture? Well, culture is very easy put the way we do things. It's mm. how people behave it's uh, the choices they do the, the way they prioritize it's in a, in a um, uh, company or a team it's the way you collaborate how you speak to each other how you solve problems mm -hmm. it's all of that because culture is basically behaviors and habits uh that is put in system uh, mm -hmm. consciously or not consciously so so what i always talk about if you have to start with your values because mm -hmm. what you believe in shapes the way you think and the way, what you think shapes the way you behave. Mm. And when you keep on behaving in a certain way and it becomes habits, the collective habits becomes your culture. Mm. So, so it always, it starts with what you truly believe in and that kind of mirrors into the way you actually show up. Mm. So being conscious about that, that is how you can actually also start to build culture mm. because Culture can happen by chance, which is what it happens in most companies, honestly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or it can you can build it deliberately. And that's what we help our clients do. Fantastic. And, you know, you spoke about values and culture. Mm -hmm. I've often seen founders or company CEOs talk about values and culture, but then they, you know, either leave it to the CHRO or someone else uh, mm -hmm. to be able to ensure that, values and culture are imbibed in every single uh, you know person working there what are your perspectives on this well my perspective is values and culture are extremely important mm -hmm. but it has to start well it does start with the top so to to delegate culture i will say is a big mistake because mm -hmm. unless the leadership team are living according to those values and are demonstrating that culture mm -hmm. No one else can make that happen. So this is underestimating the power and the importance of uh, culture, but also, and what I hear again and again, working with executives, they many actually don't understand what a big impact they have. Mm -hmm. So it's not that they don't care. It's that they don't think that, well, uh, you know, I can do my things, but as long as everyone else does, I say, it doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. the, the ripple effect of everything you do becomes the culture. Mm -hmm. uh, so... Uh, 
uh, a lot of people talk about values and they talk about culture, but it's not. It's only when they demonstrate it themselves and take it seriously, hmm. and also use it as guiding principles: how you make decisions, how you solve problems, and and how you do things in your company. Hmm. Very interesting. And yet, you know, when you talk to people, some people say, "Oh, I've got a fantastic work culture," and I've got some people say that the the work culture is lousy. <laughs> uh, and I've heard this many times in companies. When yeah. you are called in to work with a culture that is a bit cha- challenging, how do you uh, start the whole process of changing culture? Well, I'm going to tell you what I do. I maybe literally, or at least uh, uh, not like what do you mean? Uh, sim- symbolically, mm-hmm. uh, put up a mirror uh, in front of the leadership team because. Mm-hmm. Uh, if they want to change the culture, they have to start with themselves. Mm. And not very many leadership teams actually are willing to start with themselves. Uh, and then I actually also say that then you won't be able to change the organization. Absolutely. We always start with the leadership team mm. uh, because that's where the uh, you know they will shape the rest of the culture. Mm. Uh, but that being said, I do not believe in only a top-down approach. You mm. have to involve the organization. So... Uh, Corporate Spring, our our company name, actually comes from it was <laughs> it was um, uh, inspired by the Arab Spring because mm-hmm. that was big ten years ago. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. you say, you know, the bottoms up change. If mm. the top change, you know, you can end up having uh, you know people throwing you all away after mm. if you don't uh, kind of uh, make sure that they can live in an environment that they can thrive. So. When you as a leadership team decide that this is important, uh, involve the organization and co-create that culture. Mm. But you can't delegate it. You can't just say, hey, you guys down there, you change and we'll stay the same. It doesn't work. So, Mm. yeah, it has to start on the top. (laughs) Very interesting. And uh, if one goes a little further, Mm. with so many startups all over the world, and you are in the startup capital of the world in, in California, how does a young company start to build culture? Well, they have a huge advantage because they can actually build it from scratch mm. instead of repairing, you know, old mistakes or things that doesn't work and, and, and that big, big ship that needs, you know, to, to change. Mm. Um, that's why, I mean, I love working with startups because then you can start from the beginning. So one of our, my clients, I started working with them when they were three people. They hired me to come in to help them mm. build because they had great ambitions and say, okay, we need to start mm. uh, thinking about culture now. So mm. we had an exercise where actually they defined their company values when they were three people. Mm. And then they decided, and now we're going to hire the people who share those values. Um, and, and they also define their purpose who, and we're going to hire people who would love and be part of this purpose and then they kind of grew it from there. And mm-hmm. it worked so well because then you have this in mind from the beginning. Um, and a lot of companies wait till they're a little bit too big and then they kind of, and, and then again, you have to repair. So, mm-hmm. uh, and for startups, having the entrepreneurial mindset and, and being able to move fast, things like that is so important. Okay. So being clear about that from the very beginning with people who join the company, that's important. Fascinating. And, you know, Peter Drucker had famously said, and I'm sure you've heard this many times, culture eats strategy for breakfast. What comes first for a company, culture or strategy? Well, you know what I say? I say make culture your strategy. That's the best thing. Because when culture becomes a strategy, so I don't don't believe in either or. I say Mm. strategy. Culture is the way you're actually going to make things uh, happen. Mm. So again and again, I hear this so often. People say, well, culture, that's something we're going to work with later. You know, that's like when we have time, when we have money. Mm. And I say, you know, to me, that makes as much sense Mm. as um, building a house or building the foundation of a house Mm. after it's built Mm. or giving the flower water uh, only if it blossoms. Hmm. It, 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 it's, it is what's going to make everything happen. Um, so that whole notion about culture being separate from strategy, I don't buy into that at all. But 
Yes, if you have to choose, uh, culture is uh, cannot be cannot be ignored. Mm -hmm. A strategy that will have to change all the time because of the changing demands of the world, right? Right. But the culture is that going to enable that to happen. Mm, very interesting. And you know, I was speaking to a few startup founders on, on my show, and one thing that came out from a couple of them was that oh, we've got to build culture in the organization, but that doesn't apply to us. We are the owners, or we are the founders. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your thoughts? <laughs> it, it doesn't make sense. I agree. But why? Why would you not? Because that's how you make things happen. That's how you conduct your business. So, as a founder, as a leader, isn't that the most important thing you do? Okay, you set a direction. This is what we're here to do. Mm. How are we going to work together to make that happen? That's your so, culture. Yeah. Don't you want to be part of that conversation? Oh, it doesn't make sense to me at all. Uh, I, I agree. I, I think to say that you don't understand what culture is. Honestly. Well said. Well said. You know, the same set of people would say that uh, we expect everyone to be in office by 9 a.m. And I said, what time do you reach? They said, we come by 11. So then how can the rest of your office comes, come at 9 if you're going to give yourself the leeway at 11? He said, but we work all night. Mm -hmm. um, so I said, well, there's something not right in this whole process. Yes. But uh, tell me another thing. How does uh, society or nations impact mm. cultures you know there are some societies where doing certain things is cultural but it mm. may not necessarily be something which is good for business mm. yeah it's interesting and i've been working in global companies my mm. entire career uh, so we had a lot of discussions around this uh, and my take on this is as a company you stand for certain values and mm. you have to be very clear about those values mm. so let's say integrity okay we believe in integrity in our company um what uh people how people conduct their business and how they act in the different local culture yes that will vary you cannot mm. sit in a headquarter in the u.s and pre you know demand that in india or norway they're going to go out and act like americans you know mm. Mm. but you can demand that we uh stand for integrity Correct. And that goes for every nation. So I think back to values, be very clear about the values, mm -hmm. but then uh, trust people and empower them to do things which is uh, aligned with their local cultures, uh, mm -hmm. because anything else will be unnatural, I think. But values, I think, are very human values uh, mm -hmm. that will work in any culture. Thank you. Great response. One more question on culture before I move to your book. You know, mm -hmm. And this is, again, I've heard this many times. Uh, oh, this is how it happens here. Mm. Right? Oh, yeah. And, you know, legacy kind of uh, processes or systems. And you ask someone, why are you doing it? And this is how it happens here. And I say, but mm. why don't you make a change? Mm. How does uh, someone tackle this kind of comments coming repeatedly? Oh, this is how it happens here. Yeah. That's a good question because I that I hear that a, a lot as well. And and if you think about we say culture, uh, sometimes people use that as a, a argument for not mm, changing. Correct. Well, that, that's how we do things. So uh, that's why I always say when you talk about culture, culture is not a static thing. Not like oh, this is how it is. Mm. Your culture is always about how are you gonna succeed with your goals and deliver mm. on your purpose. That's it. Mm. So if you can say, well, that's how is how we do things. The response or the could be, is that helping you be successful? Mm -hmm. Is the way you do things is that how you're gonna be successful in the future? It might have taken you up to this place. But will it take you into where you need to go in the next three to five years? Mm. So that's when you have to have that conversation. So it's very easy to, to lean back to that. But I think um, at least what I've seen in some big corporations, it's mm -hmm. it's uh, people are um, afraid to challenge how things are done. And I think that's a very, very dangerous thing. If no one asks why, you might end up doing things that someone decided 10 years ago was going to okay. do, which doesn't make sense anymore. Mm. Uh, so always when I work with groups and our clients, we always say we have to have a culture where it's allowed to question things mm. that doesn't make sense. So you instead use your time on things that does make sense, that does take you forward. Um, well, so, said. well said, well said. Now let's, let's talk about your book, uh, Fly Butterfly. Tell me about your book and your hypothesis when you wrote this book. 
Yes, so the book came uh, from the idea of um, storytelling as a powerful tool in order to, to um, express things that you stand for and things you have experienced. So my book is about a woman in the corporate world. She's from New York and uh, very ambitious and has to, um, well, she's climbing the corporate ladder in the very male dominated, uh, dominated IT world. Hmm. And after a while, she starts becoming like the men she works with, right? She There's no room for her feminine values because that's not how things are done in the corporate Correct. world, right? And then uh, when she is sent on a business trip to Hawaii, um, she's asked to do something that is very much against her values. Mm -hmm. So she has to make a choice that jeopardizes her career. Mm -hmm. And the book is all about her journey, the metamorphosis journey from how she thought she had to be, mm -hmm. to be successful, to becoming who she really is, and mm -hmm. then bringing that new part of her back into the corporate world mm -hmm. and see what happens then. How so that is, uh, yeah, so Fly Butterfly, that's um, <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, the, the story about uh, uh, a journey that a woman go on, but has its leadership philosophy, its life philosophy. Mm -hmm. um, it has, um, yeah, the, it, there's a lot of things. Uh, I'm, that sure. I'm sure. Well, I'm going to go and check out your book on Amazon. and I'm going to ask all our viewers and listeners to yeah. go and check out Anakin's book, uh, Fly Butterfly. So Anakin, uh, I've got time for one more question. And now this is for the, all the, you know, for the thousands and thousands of people who will listen to our conversation. Based on your own amazing journey and all the great work you are doing in different areas on culture, on strategy as an entrepreneur, what would you say are three lessons or three learnings you want our viewers and listeners to take away? Mm. Well, I, the first of them, I would say, is to have the courage to listen to your own uh, voice and your own uh, intuition. Yeah. Uh, personally, I've seen that every time I listen too much to others, uh, mm -hmm. it takes me on the wrong path. Uh, so uh, having the courage to do that, and that means sometimes doing very uncomfortable things because taking the safe path you know, the, the path that everyone else goes um, mm. is easy and, and uh, creating your own path is more challenging. But mm. personally, I would recommend that mm. if you want to um, have a work life that you can grow and learn and, and enjoy. Mm. Um, the second is to understand how important it is to be happy, mm. to actually prioritize happiness. And mm. some people think that that's something that belongs like, after work or another place and said no mm. and there's so much research done on mm. happiness and it so a lot of people think I have to be successful and I have to achieve this and this and that and then I'll be happy mm. but all research shows it's the other way around mm. when you are happy you become successful so mm. I say pursue happiness um and the third one is um I think just um and it, 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 it's in the same in the same uh, family of that, but mm -hmm. uh, daring to um, question how things are, because just because some things are a certain way doesn't yeah. mean me it's supposed to be that way. Yeah. Uh, so all of all of these things that I uh, want the takeaway is it demands a little bit of courage, mm -hmm. but on the other side of that is a much more enjoyable, happy. Um, work life and life in general. Fascinating. And on that note, Anakin and your three amazing lessons, have the courage to listen to your own voice and intuition, understand the importance of being happy. And the third one is dare to question uh, how things are. Thank you so much for speaking to me. Thank you for talking to me about corporate spring, uh, happy life, happy work. Thank you for talking to me about culture and strategy. Uh, and thank you for going into so much depth about culture and how organizations need to build culture or can restart to build culture. Yeah. Thank you also for talking to me about your book, Fly Butterfly. Thank you again and good luck. Thank you so much, Ash. Wonderful to be here. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Videocast and Podcast, a platform that brings you knowledge, experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Just search for the brand called You.